UW360 is proudly supported by Pacific Office Automation, Copy, Print, Workflow, and IT, Problem Solved. Today on UW360, the ties that bind. How the UW campus continues to play a vital role in the lives of Husky alums. Plus, we're talking trash and getting a lesson in garbology. Also, the oldest building on the UW campus gets a well-deserved makeover. We'll tour 120-year-old Denny Hall. And from childhood dream to dream job, meet the new UW athletic director who's already a familiar face on campus. From the University of Washington, welcome to UW360. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn Douglas. The University of Washington is more than 150 years old, with more than 45,000 students now attending it. And for many of those students, the 700-acre Seattle campus will continue to play a vital role in their lives long after graduation. Stacy Sakamoto has the story of the UW's powerful campus connection. Thousands of alumni return to the University of Washington every year. For them, it's more than a place to learn. We like to come back and, and connect where we went to school. It's a place to play. Nothing better in the world than to be messing about on books. A place to share. I wanted to show my niece where I went to school. and a place to dream. Go, you dub! They already love the Huskies, so, you know, the University of Washington is what they're gonna do when they grow up. They're gonna come here, graduate, be alumni. It is nice here, it is so cool. For David Gandera, campus is a place to mentor others. So did you connect with any of the other bar takers? He's a business consultant who has helped many UW students over the years, including Fabiola Jimenez. They often meet at the University of Washington Club. And I want a place that uh, reflects what I do. I mean, that I want to show off the campus, that I can come here, it's central, and I can walk around and, and show the campus off with pride. It's quite a hidden gem, and I'm very fortunate to know what the inside of it looks like now. <laughs> At the Washington Yacht Club, seasoned sailors share the water with beginners in canoes. This was started in 1948 because people stayed in sailing after they graduated. It was sort of a natural that they kept people involved afterwards. Like recent graduate Michael Brown, who joined the club as a student a few years ago. It's a lot cheaper than owning your own boat, and it's great too. Like you just pay membership fees, and you get to sail as much as you want. They have great classes too that I'd recommend for anyone. Martha Tran works at the UW's first year programs office, planning dog days. We actually met at dog days. <laughs> so the program that I run now is the program we met at um, way back when. So it was no surprise the couple got married here on campus. So Sylvan Grove, we used to go hang out there um, as undergrads and have lunch there. And so it kind of made sense when it came to finding a wedding location to just find some place where we had grown up together because Justin, my husband, also um, went to the university and did his undergrad here. Their wedding photos were shot at other campus landmarks, including Kane Hall. We wanted to capture all these places that had really a lot of meaning for us when we were going here as undergrads. Alumni stay connected with campus in many different ways, staying connected with the people and places they love most. The campus is always changing, so you never know what it'll look like next time they come back. Other UW locations have also been used for weddings, including the Washington Park Arboretum, the Burke Museum, the Mary Gates Hall Atrium, and the Center for Urban Horticulture. Still ahead, how talking trash is taking recycling to a whole new level. Plus, meet the UW athletic director who went from childhood Husky fan to the head of all Husky sports. And we get a closer look at one of the most successful sports programs at UW. See how the women's soccer team manages to produce some of the best female soccer players in the world. 
as UW 360 continues. The following UW 360 story is made possible by the generous support of BECU. BECU, more than just money. Welcome back to UW 360. Okay, we're gonna talk trash for a few minutes. Real trash, like garbage. There's actually a team of trash experts at the UW who research, study, and come up with new ways to deal with garbage. They are garbologists. And today, they're working to make it even easier for us to recycle our garbage with a new animated interactive display called Money in the Trash. Navigating your way around campus may be easier than learning the university's compost, trash, and recycling rules. But it gets hard because there's like a lot of symbols on like one trash can, so yeah, I'm sort of like very between like trying to be do the right thing and like actually just going like, okay, I'm gonna toss it in this bin and continue on. Don't forget. <laughs> We're still, um, we're still saving the... One of the pioneers of the University of Washington's field of garbology studies understands the frustration. I think our present system of composting and recycling puts a lot of the burden on the user to make decisions and um, they're deciding from an incredible array of products at their disposal. UW archaeologist Jack Johnson says this interactive discard station in the Odegaard undergrad library called Money in the Trash is aimed at turning that puzzling moment at the bins from frustration to fun. And probably the most fun thing is you get a little feedback. If I approach with my um, recycling, when I put it in the bin, then immediately a trigger comes up to show how much the item weighs. It also calculates that the university would save $63.80 a day if everyone on campus made the same correct choice. That's more than $23,000 a year. The UW pays for its waste by weight. So the more weight that we throw away in waste, the more it's costing the university and therefore all of the students. When the interactive display was tested in Packard Hall recently, the team found it helped. 8% more waste was being recycled and composted or diverted. Visual communication and design professor Karen Chang spearheaded the money in the trash display, which was created with the help of students. Some of those students are now part of a startup trying to make this money saver a money maker. Ideally in the next couple months we'll be able to build some prototype where you can take a coffee cup and you can put it up to the camera and it'll tell you, oh hey, this is a coffee cup and it goes into recycling. Recyclables and compost are less expensive to dispose of than garbage destined for a landfill. So if you're able to divert the streams from landfill into compost and recycling where it's cheaper for the business, that's going to save them a lot of money. So some people just don't. As a grad student, Johnson spent years sorting and studying campus waste bins and says the best thing you can do to help save money is to learn what is compostable. And the garbologists say campus composting is easier than you think. Well, you'd have more of a chance of being able to throw everything in compost and get it right than to throw it in landfill because the UW's made such a significant investment in compostable packaging. Part of our challenge as designers was to make garbage as beautiful as possible and get people just to pause and even if they take away one new piece of information from the display, that would be considered successful for us. You feel like your individual decision is trivial, but cumulatively they can have a really large effect. You may have never heard the term garbology before, but it's actually been around for more than 50 years. It may have started in Australia, where they coined the term for waste management workers by calling them garbologists. It is one of the iconic symbols of the University of Washington. Denny Hall has hosted college classes for more than 120 years. And now this grand old building is getting a well-deserved makeover. Austin Seedentoff takes us on a tour. This is a story about UW's newest, oldest building, Denny Hall. It's been over 50 years since Denny's last renovation. And the building is finally getting a much needed update as a critical part of UW's Restore the Core program, 
to renovate campus's most historic, important, and visually striking buildings. This building is so iconic in its visual nature. It, it is unique to the campus. It's the only French Renaissance chateau we have on campus. It's not collegiate Gothic. They don't build it like that anymore. The first time you walk into the building, you can feel the history and see the history. And I mean, they don't have buildings like this. You don't build buildings like this anymore. So it's, uh, you know, that makes it special and unique and pretty awesome to be a part of. But we're trying to get the everything to match. Denny Hall has been brought into the 21st century with modern infrastructure, earthquake protection, and silver certification in lead for environmental impact. And the building is so old, it had to be almost entirely gutted to do it. We knew we were removing all interior elements. So we took down every wall that wasn't holding the building up. So you could see a cavernous 60 foot by 60 foot by 70 foot tall hole through the middle of this structure. Coordinating a complete restoration of the interior is no small feat. But to really understand the true significance of the restoration, you need to understand the history of the building itself. Denny Hall was built in 1895, after the UW moved from its original location downtown, where the Olympic Fairmont Hotel stands now. For a time, it was the only building on campus, and as the university grew, Denny stood proudly for over 50 years until, in the mid-1950s, it was stricken by architectural tragedy. It was remodeled considerably. The interior was completely redone with no respect whatever for the uh, building's character. I taught it for 40 years, and in all that time, Denny was um, in its bad stage. And bringing back our original building to uh, some semblance of its original beauty after having gone through a, a dark period. <laughs> you might say literally dark because the inside was very dark. Eight foot ceilings before in, in dark hallways to you know 26 foot vaulted ceiling is a huge transformation. It's impressive. We've reopened up the core of the building. We've put this central stairway with a skylight on top, which was there originally and was removed in the 50s. Uh, we've increased the size of the entrance to make it large and welcoming so it'll be a vibrant, active building. And because of this open space, you'll, there'll be a clarity of where you are relative to the whole. You'll be able to see the other floors. You'll be able to see people coming and going. A restoration would be a rebuilding of the uh, of the of Denny Hall as it was originally. It's 1895 design, and that isn't what's happening. What's happening? I'm calling a renovation, uh, revisiting. It's uh, it's reinterpreting the building in in 21st century terms. There's a lot of people who care a lot about this building. It represents a lot for the campus as the first building on campus. Um, so to get to be the people that come in and treat it with respect and bring it back to life is a real thrill. Come see Denny Hall for yourself, for the first time in a long time, as it was meant to be. That renovation project was actually finished six months ahead of schedule, all ready for a generation of new students. Up next, turning a dream into a dream job. That's what happened to the new UW Athletic Director, Jennifer Cohen. We'll meet her next. And we'll go inside the UW Women's Soccer Program, where players learn true success goes far beyond just winning games. <laughs> the UW 360 continues. Welcome back to UW 360. When Jennifer Cohen was named UW's new athletic director, she needed no introduction to Husky Nation. She's actually worked at the University of Washington for 18 years. But as Stacy Sakamoto discovered, Cohen's ties to the purple and gold go back even further than that. Hi, cows. It's a typical morning, and Jennifer Cohen is headed for the office she dreamed of occupying as a young girl. It's been exhilarating, it really has been. I, I'm still kind of pinching myself, and there's been times where I keep saying, is this real? She's the second woman to hold the job of athletics director at the University of Washington, and at the time she was appointed, the only woman to lead a Pac-12 athletics program. Yeah, get your W's up. You can't do it, I've got mine. <laughs> oh, you can, all right. In August at Husky Picture Day. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three. <laughs> Cohen reminisced about coming to Montlake as a young girl. Walking into the stadium for Husky Picture Day, it kind of hit me. I was like, I've come full circle. I mean, I was on this field idolizing players and coaches and growing up wanting to be a Husky and ultimately to be able to be leading this program. It's a dream come true and I'm just honored. Her father was a season ticket holder and Cohen developed a routine at games. This is exactly the side I'd always go on. And then yeah, just like really loud barks. I wanted to intimidate the opponent. I legitimately thought I was intimidating the opponent. Husky Picture Day was also a family tradition. I love Chuck Nelson. He was just an unbelievable place kicker. Jacques is back. Jacques Robinson. They used to have this button that says Jacques is back. She even celebrated her 16th birthday at Husky Stadium with her best friends. They asked me what I wanted to do for my 16th birthday and I said we have to go to Seattle and we have to go to Husky Picture Day. But her most special memories are of legendary coach Don James. Oh, the dog father. You know, my hero. My hero. You actually wrote yeah, to him. I did. And you said to him, I want to be the next football coach. And he wrote back and said, girls aren't really coaching football, but they are getting in the business of college sports. So I told my parents I was going to be the athletic director at the University of Washington. Yeah. Cohen earned a master's in physical education and joined the UW Athletics Department in 1998. That's when she reconnected with Coach James. Over the last 18 years, Cohen has overseen fundraising for major projects, including the renovation of Husky Stadium, preparing her for the challenging role of athletic director. What's important to us right now is improving our financial landscape and, and creating more financial stability for this place. That's because she inherited a seven to eight million dollar budget deficit. What keeps me up at night most days is being concerned about how do we increase revenues, how do we run this place efficiently while being able to still invest back into our students. The two areas she wants to improve attendance and fundraising. So she was excited to see the turnout and excitement at Picture Day. Cohen and her husband Bill have two sons of their own, Dylan and Tyson. She wants her sons to find their passions, just as she did. I see a girl that found a passion at a young age and that I really believe that this program and this university gave me a place to belong. Do we call you dog mother now? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been called that. That's a good one. Dog mother. I like that. It has a ring to it. <laughs> well, how's this for a first day on the job? Literally just before Cohen's appointment was announced, the UW women's golf team won its first NCAA national championship. Up next, the team that's produced some of the best female soccer players in the world. We'll go behind the scenes of the incredibly successful UW women's soccer team where success extends far beyond the field as UW 360 continues. Welcome back to UW 360. When it comes to athletic success at the UW, one program really stands out year after year, often without attracting a lot of headlines. The UW women's soccer program is consistently one of the best in the country, producing Pac-12 standouts and Olympic stars. But as Aaron Mayofsky reports, even more important to the program may be how they've created a family atmosphere that produces outstanding contributors to our community. I love the Huskies and I love coming to the games. Usually every night it's just packed over here. Oh. And all I see is just everybody and it's always hard to find a seat. I'm a Husky for life. Nothing says more about Husky soccer than an event like this, the annual alumni game where players from decades ago to players today come to celebrate 
being purple and gold. There's nothing like the Husky family, and there's nothing like being at the games. It's a big part of who I am. Being a Husky has prepared me for being a mom, and a lawyer, and a wife, and all of those things. So um, I want it to be a part of my kids' lives. It's pretty cool to have a degree and be able to play soccer at a, at a top school that I now am able to say I studied design from University of Washington, and that means something to people. So it's like a small art school experience in a big university which has been incredible for my career. Hard working, early morning things that a lot of other students don't experience at all. And so when you get into the working world, you're, the grind isn't so much of a grind. There we go, you guys, back at it again. Come on, Shay. The University of Washington is a family and you're not gonna get that anywhere else. So you're not gonna get the support and the like, enthusiasm and excitement that everyone has here for each other. Yes, Husky for life, definitely, always. You put a lot of hard work into try to win in games. And when you score a goal, I don't care who it's against or when it happens, it's important and it's awesome. So celebrate our goals. <laughs> it's really the girls and the team. The whole reason why our atmosphere is so great and such great team chemistry, both on and off the field. It goes by so fast that you just have to enjoy and appreciate every single moment while you're out here. I'm out here as much as I can because I miss it so much. We had a great academic team. We just got our work done and got out of here with a great degree. Go Huskies! Yeah, go dogs! Go dogs! Coach Gallimer knows her newest squad has the potential to get the team back to the Elite Eight where they finish the 2010 season. The dog's schedule runs from August to November. And that does it for this edition of UW360. If you'd like more information on any of the stories you saw today, just head to our website at uwtv.org slash uw360. You'll also find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Carolyn Douglas. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time with all new stories from the University of Washington.